Chapter 17, Solubility in Common Ion. So we are going to be calculating the molar solubility of uh, in two different problems here, and we're using the same process as we used in the last video. The only difference here is our ice chart, we're going to have uh, slightly different initial values because there will be a common ion. There will be ions in common, which sounds a little weird, so let's just start it and you'll see what I mean. Let's first identify the major species in this problem. So in this situation we have aluminum, oops, I use my other color, aluminum hydroxide. Which is a salt, and we know it's a salt because we have a metal with a polyatomic ion which counts as a salt. Step two is to write out the reaction. So our reaction in this case is aluminum hydroxide, which is a solid. Let's include that. I uh, have a KSP, which means that it goes to equilibrium, so I'll have my double arrows. And it's aluminum and three hydroxides. Now let's notice something here. We have hydroxides coming out of the woodwork and there is something else that is going to produce hydroxides here other than aluminum hydroxide. What could that be? That would be water. Now usually we ignore the hydrogen, hydrogens and hydroxides that come out of water. However, if you take a look up at the problem, our KSP is incredibly tiny. It's very, very small. So we're actually going to need to include our hydroxides when we make our ice chart. So let's just keep that in mind as we move through the problem. We'll first write out our equilibrium expression. And it's a KSP, so we'll have aluminum and our hydroxides cubed, and we don't include solids, so those get left out. So let's see, set up our ice chart. Uh, so I'm going to leave some space above this so that I can add these back in later. I want to write this ice chart down here. I'll have um, aluminum hydroxide reacts to form aluminum and hydroxide and there are three of those. Okay, so I know that I don't include solids, so that's gone. And I would usually say, well, at the beginning I don't have any aluminum, and I don't have any hydroxides. However, like we were just talking about, this is a very, very small KSP, so I'm going to add a little extra note on here. I'll use this greenish color. Um, I know that the autoionization of water makes it so that, here I'll just write that whole thing out first. So water always provides us with hydroxides at at least 1.0 times 10 to the negative 7 molarity. So we're going to include this because uh, our KSP is very small include waters hydroxides because KSP is very small. So, all right, if, if we had a salt that was producing hydrogens and the KSP was very, very small, then I would include the hydrogen concentration from water in this chart. So I'm going to include this. I've got 1 times 10 to the negative 7, and this came from water. 
All right, so now I need my changes. I'll pick something that has no coefficient or coefficient of 1 to be my x, which means that this one must be plus 3x. You could have said the hydroxide is x and the aluminum is 1 third x. That would also work. So here we end up with 1 times 10 to the negative 7 plus 3x. Three, plus three so then we'll move on to our step 5. We're almost done with this one. Plug into equilibrium expression. Okay, so x times 1 times 10 to the negative 7 plus 3x cubed is equal to our given KSP, which is super small. Uh, if we would like, we could assume x is small, because our KSP is small. And if we do that, that means that this x, that this 3x that's being compared to something else can be crossed off. Wonderful. And that will tell us that our x is equal to 2 times 10 to the negative 11. And that's our molarity of um, aluminum. Okay. Uh, let's just make sure that our assumption was valid. So I have to prove that 3 x over what it's being compared to oops, times 100 must be less than or equal to 5%. And if you were to crunch those numbers, it would be. So I'll just check that off like we're good. It's small enough. So I could figure out the concentration of my hydroxide ions too, but I don't really care about that. What I want to know is how much aluminum hydroxide was able to dissolve before it was saturated. And I know since I have a one-to-one -one between aluminum and aluminum hydroxide, I can write that on here, one-to-one -one ratio. That means that the molar solubility of aluminum hydroxide is also equal to 2 times 10 to the negative 11 molarity. Uh, I could convert this into grams per liter if I wanted to, um, however moles per liter also works. So there's that. All right, so this was called a common ion solubility problem because we had hydroxides in common. And we had to include those hydroxides because the KSP was so small that water's hydroxide contribution was actually substantial. So let's try this again. This time we are going to calculate the molar solubility of lanthanum fluoride, fun in grams per liter, so this one wants us to convert it at the end, in a 0 0.010 molarity potassium fluoride solution, interesting, given a KSP of 2 times 10 to the negative 19. Okay, so as usual, it's kind of nice, you'll get to see how these problems line up with each other. So first we have our lanthanum fluoride and this is a metal with a non-metal, which is classified as a salt. Step two, write out the reaction. If you want, you could try to do this on your own without me. Um, just keep in mind there will be common ions. See if you can figure those out. So I'll show it dissociating. I'll include my states.
Now I'll write out my equilibrium expression. If you haven't tried any of these problems out on your own yet, you really should. Don't forget to cube that fluoride. We don't include the original solid. We don't include solids in equilibrium expressions. Okay, so in this case, are one of my ions hydrogen or hydroxide? No. They aren't, and so even though I have a small KSP, uh, those hydrogens and hydroxides aren't going to affect our uh, K value. So I don't need to include water's hydrogens and hydroxides in it. Um, so instead I'll move on to step four. So our initial row is going to be different again. Uh, we are adding lanthanum fluoride into a potassium fluoride solution. That potassium fluoride solution is going to release fluoride ions. I know I'm going to end up with 0 0.010 molarity F minus from that potassium fluoride solution and that needs to get included in this ice chart. Whoop. I did not mean to end up there. There, okay. That's supposed to be an arrow. So, okay, sure, I don't have any lanthanum at first, but I do have 0 0.010 fluoride at the very beginning. Now we proceed as usual. So, adding x of that, adding 3x of that, x point zero one zero plus 3x. And we'll move on to our final step. Plug into the equilibrium expression. So I know that x times 0 0.010 plus 3x cubed, don't forget that cubed, is equal to our given Ksp, 2 times 10 to the negative 19th. So let's see if I do that. Let's go ahead and assume x is small. We can do that because our Ksp value is super small. And I need to show that um, if I do that, I need to show that this 3x that I'm crossing out is at least, or at the most, 5% of what it's being compared to. So let's go ahead and solve for x then. You'd get x is equal to 2 times 10 to the negative 13. And that, well we know that lanthanum's uh, concentration is equal to x, so I could say this. Now I know if I were to plug that in, 3x over 0 0.010 times 100 would give me a value less than or equal to 5%, so we're good there. Um, you can plug it in if you'd like to see for yourself. And same as before, I know I have a one-to-one -one between lanthanum and lanthanum fluoride, so I could say, oh, this is a one-to-one -one ratio. So the molar solubility of lanthanum fluoride is equal to 2 times 10 to the negative 
13 molarity. However, this problem wants our answer in grams per, uh, what was it, grams per liter. So, 2 times 10 to the negative 13 moles per liter. I know I have one mole for every 195.9. Grams, and that will give me my answer of 4 times 10 to the negative 11 grams per liter of lanthanum fluoride. All right, and that is our answer.